Hi, I'm Cheryl, and here's a cheery card. And I made it a birthday card. It says, it's your day on the front, and then on the inside, it has happy birthday with a cute little bee there. And uh, it doesn't take very many supplies, and it goes together pretty quickly. So let's get started on the card. And what you're going to need is so you're going to need a piece of Whisper White. And this is five and a half by eight and a half, and score it and fold it at four and a quarter. That's our card base. Another smaller piece of Whisper White, three and three quarters by two and a half. A piece of crushed car curry cardstock, and this is four by two and three quarters. That will be our mat for the front. Uh, I've got a little piece of baker's twine here. And mine is a is a variegated, you see. It's white and yellow. If you just have white, um, you can always use your inks and, and dye your your baker's twine to match. And that's just a matter of, um, of making a little puddle of the color on um, whatever. Uh, if you have a, a um, silicone mat, uh, you can just do it on right on that. Just take your take your ink pad and just dab it on your on your mat and add a little bit of water to it and just smoosh your twine in and let it dry. But anyway, let's move on. I get started on that and talk about that all day. Um, I'm using the Garden and Bloom stamp set. And let's see, what are we using on this one? I'm using the Sketchy Flat Big Flower. I'm using the Fill In Big Flower. Um, using the small Sketchy Flower here. I'm using the little Bumblebee. And I also used the little Fill In just on the inside of the card. Um, hmm. I think that's it on the on this one. And then from Happy Birthday Gorgeous, which is another lovely um, birthday-oriented stamp. So it's got all kinds of nice little flowers and things on here. But I'm using, um, let's see, I'm using It's Your Day for the front and then a Happy Birthday for the, um, for the inside of the card. So we'll be using those two stamp sets. I've got my Tombow glue. I've got my snail using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and uh, my Crush Curry ink. So let's get going on this card. Let's do some stamping. So I'm bringing in my card base and my smaller piece of Whisper White. And I happen to have some um, repositionable tape, but if you don't have repositionable tape, just use your regular snail and then take your take your um, your sticky, just put a little bit of that on the back and then take it and just dab it on your clothes a few times and that'll pick up lint and um, it'll make it a little bit less sticky and it'll be less likely to tear your card Oh my goodness, got a little ant running around here. So I'm going to put that right in the center of my card base. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to use some scrap paper. I'm going to put some of this repositionable tape along the edge here. And yes, these are this is a coupon booklet that I get in the mail. And it's just it's so nice because I can write notes on it. And sometimes I use I actually use the coupons, but mostly I write notes on it or I um it happens to be exactly five and a half inches long, so it will mask off the length of a card perfectly. I don't know if they if they did that purposely so I had 
had um, <laughs> some nice scrap paper to work with. But um, so anyway, but let's let's get going. I'm I'm gonna be spending my whole time just gabbing about stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is stamp. It's your day. So I'll ink that up, and a lot of times I would. I would use my Misty. I have one of the mini Misties to do this, but I'm going to just hope for the best. And there we go. It looks pretty good to me. One, two, three, and up. And I got a little ink on my fingernail. There we go. And so I've got that in place. And that's important because I'm going to work, uh, you know, I want. To work my flowers around it. I don't want to. I don't want to take up that space. Get carried away with doing flowers. I'm going to start out with the big flower. Um, when you're doing kind of a background thing like this, it's best to start out with the big flower, or the big biggest um, stamp that you have, and then you can then you fill in with the smaller ones uh, stamp one there. Ooh, that didn't do the center very well. Let me see if I can redo that. There. There we go. That's better. And I'll put one over. Well, I'll put this one in. I want to have one right in the center of my little um, panel that I stuck down. So I'll do that one. Oh, good. That one came out. That came out really nice. Okay, now I'll put one over here. I probably should have put a little, a little um, something underneath here. A little foam mat or something. Oh, that's another one. I'll have to do that over again. Let me get over top of it. And there we go. And let's see. I'll do one more up here. Just have that come in on my paper. my center one a little bit. Okay. Not the best stamping in the world, but you know what? Nobody knows but me that I didn't do very well. So now I'll take my little flower here and I'll just fill in a couple little spots here. I want to leave some room because I want to put some little bumblebees. You know, and let, before I get too crazy with that, let me do some bees. I might end up taking up all their little spaces. I don't want to do that. Let's see. That looks like a good spot for that bee. And I'll turn him around and he can go right there. And another one up here. And got to have here somewhere. Let's see. Right there looks good. Okay, now I'll continue with my flower. I see a couple little spots. I could use some flowers. And maybe one right here. Try and hide that little blotch I made. Okay. Let me grab a baby wipe and wipe this up. And we're ready to peel off our centerpiece. Right. The next thing we're going to do is take the crushed curry ink and we'll fill in our flowers. Now I find it best to keep my 
my sketchy flower handy because on these stamps is a little pointy thing. The, both on the sketchy one and on this one. So he's got a little pointy thing right there. And I'll use that to help me line this up quickly. So let's see, I had that flower, it was positioned like this and my pointy thing is facing over that way. So I'll ink this up with my, my crushed curry. I need to turn it upside down. <laughs> I was looking at it the wrong way. There we go. Okay. There. Now it looks like that. And the pointy thing is not. It's pointing that way. Don't make that mistake. Or you'll do like I just did and say, oh, what the heck is going on here? That's what happens. I get talking too much. Okay, so there's that one stamped. And then, let's see, we can stamp that one. This is, this part's not quite so important. As long as you fill these in. There we go, got that one. There. You could even take a marker and do this if you wanted to. Okay, so now all our flowers that are on the center panel have some of the nice crushed curry color on them. I can close this up and put it away. And we're ready. Next thing we need to do, we need to wrap our baker's twine around. So, just take your your card, and I'm going to put, where did my snail get to? I'm going to put some snail on the back, right about where I want my twine to be. That will hold my twine in place. I'm going to start out, I'm going to leave myself a tail, good sized tail here, and then I'll just wrap this around, one, two, three times is enough, I think. I did my original card four times, and it is just a little bit too much, I think. So I've got wrapped around three times, and we're just going to tie a knot, gather up all the bits, all the strings and we'll tie a knot here. And I want it just a little off to the side. And then I'll make my bow. I got quiet, didn't I? And don't you don't want to make this too tight because it will curl your card, your um, little panel here up. And that looks nice. Let me tighten that up a little bit. And now I'll I'll position it just exactly where I do want it. There, that looks good. And I'll take a pair of scissors and I'll just trim off this excess. So we don't need all those that tail there. And we can put this down on our card. Now I'm using the Tombow. I'm switching to Tombow because I want to make sure everything sticks down real good. We'll even put some over top of the twine there. And nothing will go, nothing will slide around once that Tombow gets a hold. And we'll put 
put that right in the center of the crushed curry mat. And bring our card base back in here and I'll peel off that bit there. And now if you wanted to, you could pop this up. I chose not to. You could use some dimensionals and pop it up and that does look very nice too. And you don't have to worry about being able to see where we um, have our flowers and things cut off because the um, that mat, this mat of the crushed curry will overlap that a little bit. So you won't be able to peek in the sides and see that there's nothing stamped there. So now we want to line this up with our stamping and press that down. Let's do the inside. I probably should have done this before because if I mess this up, then I'm in trouble. Now there are ways to cover this up. If you mess up, say I didn't get this, get a good stamp with this, you can always cut yourself a circle and stamp it and cover this up. You could even do a larger circle in the crushed curry around it and it'd be cute. And again, no one would know you made a mistake, but I think we got a good impression. So that's that's fine. Now I'm going to put my little bee on the inside too here. And put him right here. And again, you could color your bee in with a marker if you like. But I'm going to do it the lazy way. And do the little body with the with the little stamp that they give you in the set. And now on the stamp, let me show you. On on one side it's a little bit flatter than on the other end here on the oval. That flat end is what goes towards the head of the B. Okay. So keep that in mind. There. We got a little color on the inside and all that's left now are to add our rhinestones. Did I tell you we needed rhinestones? I don't think I did. We need rhinestones. Gotta have some rhinestones on this card. I've got lots of rhinestones I have to use up. Now I found a pack, I got a pack of them and it's they're the three, three millimeters, so they're little tiny rhinestones, and they're all different colors, and that's what I used on mine. But if you don't have the colored rhinestones, you can just take a Sharpie and get a yellow Sharpie or any other permanent marker, and you can, um, you can use, use that and color your rhinestones. Just give them a a minute or two to dry and let's see I think I'm going to need my pokey tool too I see some people use the ends of their scissors but I just like the pokey tool so I got that one little rhinestone loose and I'm just using the yellow ones so that's, there's one I have to pick, pick another yellow one out. And usually when you get a big sheet of them like this, they're all connected. Which, if you wanted to have like a little multicolored line of rhinestones, that would be great. You could just cut off however many you want it. And, and just plunk them down. Here's another one. I think I think actually it probably would have been easier to color in rhinestones than to go through all these and pick them out. Okay, I 
Let's see, we need one there, I think. And maybe, maybe two more of them. What do you think? Found another one. Isn't this fun watching me find rhinestones and put them down? <laughs> Let's see, we'll put him right here. We don't want them spaced exactly. We want them random. That's not as easy as you would think it would be. Because I think we all have a natural tendency to want to line up things. Oh, maybe one more. Maybe one over here. We all have a natural tendency to want things to line up. And me especially, I'm one of those people that I, I have to have everything lined up. I'm going to put one over there. There we go. And now it's done. So there's our card. I hope you enjoyed it and have a lot of fun trying it out. So if you'd like to see more of my videos, then be sure to hit the like button or hit the um, subscribe button down below. If you liked it, then then by all means hit that like button. I love to see that people like my cards. Um, if there are any Stamping Up products that I've used today that you would like to purchase, you can do that either through my Facebook page or my website. And as always, I'll have all the materials I used listed down below. We really didn't use that much today in the way of materials. And two stamp sets, two ink pads, and um, some glue and some tape. Oh, and rhinestones and baker's twine. I can't forget the embellishments. So, y'all, take care, stay safe, and happy stamping.